This is 8a.3. We continue with complex numbers and now we are trying to understand discrete Fourier transform. The concepts that we are going to deal with is to understand what is our complex factors as opposed to complex numbers and then we will use complex factors to understand discrete Fourier transform, <coughs> the analysis and synthesis equations. Right. The chapter is broken down into 8a.3.1 where we talk about complex factors first and then we'll introduce inner products and finally DFT. Let's begin with complex factors. If Z belongs to the complex numbers, so we use this notation, Z is an element of the set where this uh, symbol C stands for the set of complex numbers. And then we use a BOSI to represent a, a vector of complex numbers. So you know that if you have this 1, 2, 3, let's say V is this, then V is a real vector with three elements. That's how we denote it. And now uh, we are using almost the same notation. We use the exponent n on top of the set C to say that C is a column vector with n complex numbers. That's all. So as an example, C4, Z is an element of C4. is basically a, a vector like this. We have Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3, where these are all complex numbers and now if we examine each of these complex numbers and in this example we say that the elements have these values Zn plus 1 is Zn multiplied by 1 ej pi over 2 so basically it's uh, it is iterating from 0 to 3 and then when you plug in this equation you'll get these four numbers so this is a very famous vector. They all have unit length 1. And then if you examine where they are in the unit circle, uh, we begin with Z0 is 1. So what is 1? 1 is simply 1 EJ0. Or you, if you prefer 1 plus J0. So you can write it in rectangular form complex exponential form or simply one and you ignore the imaginary. Uh, I always prefer to write my complex numbers in complex exponential form because it shows me the modulus, the length as well as the angle immediately. So let us see where is Z0. This is Z0. This point exactly this point here. Uh, the along this horizontal axis is the real part of Z the real, real line and the vertical line of course is the imaginary axis and that red thing is the circle the unit circle it has radius 1 so we move along the real axis by 1 we get this point there's no imaginary part so this is Z0 what about Z1 well you work it out Z when we have Z0 Oh, sorry, we have Z1. Z1 is simply Z0 times 1 ej pi over 2. So 1 times 1 ej pi over 2 is 1 ej pi over 2. 1 ej pi over 2 is nothing but a radius 1 with angle pi over 2. So this is the point. So you see, from Z0, it moves here. So basically, you realize that the the second number is a rotation along the same unit circle uh, rotating anti-clockwise by 90 degrees. Okay, and what about the third number? Well, you plug in the equation again. Z2 equals to Z1 times 1 ej pi over 2. So let's work it out all together. Z2 is equals to Z1 which is 1 ej pi over 2 and then multiply by 1 ej pi over 2 again what do we get 
Well, remember when we multiply in complex exponential, it's really easy. It is the modulus multiplied by the modulus. The modulus is 1, so it's even easier. And then we have ej pi over 2, the angle plus. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 becomes pi. So 1 e j pi is where? So it is here. We move by pi anti-clockwise. Angle 1. So this is actually minus 1 plus j0 if you are interested in the rectangular form. And then let's try z3 now. So if we have z3, which is 1 ej pi multiplied by 1 ej pi by 2, what do we get? Again, we get 1 ej 1.5 pi. And you'll realize that then we are moving again by 90 degrees from z2 we are landing here this is z3 so in short to summarize we basically use this equation over here and we generate a sequence of four numbers from 0 to 3 and this is the four numbers and when we represent in rectangular form it is 1, j, minus 1, minus j. It shows you these four numbers. And they are four numbers on the unit circle, where the key idea is that you are seeing a sequence from z0 rotating anti-clockwise with the same radius. And each step, we are moving by pi over 2 radian. And then we are talking about each step. So therefore, we say pi over 2 radian per sample or per step and so this is a very important uh, vector that we are going to use for DFT so please learn how to gen construct this vector and understand why each of these elements behave or is the value that it is representing thank you